Bread Alert FM News as it breaks. Heroes in the skies, bringing ability out of disability. over the years, a guest who I prefer to call an inculcator of knowledge. So without wasting much of your time, I would like to invite her to the program. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. So I know you as a patient adult, patient adult. So I want you to formally introduce yourself to our Okay. Audience. Thank you for having me. My name is Patient Sulure Niado, yes, and I'm the proprietor of Frontona Academy and Frontona City College. Yes, nice to be here. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, as you said, you are a proprietor, and I prefer to call you proprietor of, of proprietors of refuge. Uh, thank you, Madam Oluremi, Patient Ado. So, I want you to share more light on your personality and your educational background. Your, your businesses and all that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm an educationist and uh, it's been for a while because I've been in this line of education for more than 35 years. And well, I was uh, in East Africa for some time, I was in Tanzania for about 16 years, in Kenya for about four years. and. Uh, I was the pioneer of a school there, this international school. Okay. That even right now we have the primary, we have the secondary, and uh, the government has given us even plots for the university over there. Uh, but right now, as proprietors of Front Run Academy, it's been a, a long journey because this school started about 17 years ago. Uh, with only three students and uh, but right now, we, we are many, not less than 500 students, and we have branches too. And we, this is the headquarters instead of four plus here uh, at White House, Okeo Town. But we have another branch in uh, Irunwe, another branch in uh, Maya too. So we are really making progress and we are doing well. Uh, I'm a trained teacher, just like I said. Uh, I've taught in different realms. I was a lecturer in the University of Dar es Salaam for some years, and I've been here helping in one way or the other in the secondary realm, in the primary realm, and as an administrator. I've been a, a successful administrator. I'm very glad about that. Thank you. Uh, Madam, you said you caught a thief in West Africa. That is where you started all this. So if you want to compare uh, private teaching education in East Africa to what you have in West Africa here in Nigeria to be precise, what would the comparison look like? Well, when we talk about education in East Africa, the difference is clear. The difference is clear because uh, they, 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 they are actually very strict and in terms of private schools, you prefer to have private schools in East Africa because people don't owe the way they owe here. During the holiday, they will have finished paying whatever amount they want to pay. And uh, you can plan your things. You can plan what you... It's on, unlike West Africa or my experience here, that a lot of people owe. Even if you ask them too much, it will be as if they are stressing them. And over there too, we have government supports. Several times they've given me grants over there that maybe during, during December they can ask for the number of students. If you have 500 students, they bring package that they will need for the next section. So it's been very, very peaceful and you would love to be there. So when I came here, it was, it was a bit not as easy as it was there. Because over there, you don't even need to borrow money to do certain things. And 
their organization is quite better. Their education is also, the quality is there because there's less corruption. So, Ma, what, uh, why did you migrate from East Africa to West Africa? Thank you very much. Come, come, West Africa is home, Nigeria is home, and uh, looking at, at my age, I'm getting older. So definitely, I would want to, to be home. And of course, the way I left home was different from the way I met it. Because when I came back, you could have teachers that are graduates, that say they're graduates. When you interview them, you meet something else. The standards are really falling. So everything was new. But I just told myself that I'm in somebody's country. I have a lot of properties. I have a lot of things. In my own country, what do I have? And I felt I should be able to also contribute to the growth of the education in my own country. And that was actually my aim of coming back here. I don't regret coming back because at least I've been able to influence student lives. Many students have gone, gone out of my school. Some are in abroad, some are here, and they are doing well, and they have the quality of education which I offer them. So that is it. It was a passion, man. Coming it is a passion. It's not a, just, just a business. It's a passion. And coming to Nigeria, then you have to start to just free students compared to East Africa, here in Africa, where you have a multitude of, plenty of students. It must have been a very challenging moment for you. But before you go so to that question, we have to go on a quick commercial break. And by the time we get back, you explain to our listening and viewing audience. For sponsorship, advert placement, please call 081-0814-15922. Red Alert FM. News as it breaks. Guys, bringing ability out of disability. We are, we are still on Red Alert FM and the program Heroes in Disguise. Before we went on that short commercial break, I asked uh, Mrs. Or Professor Oluremi uh, the, the question about uh, migrating from East Africa. I mean, from the glorious, from the glory of East Africa, where she have to just make do with free students, it must have been a very huge sacrifice for her. So, Mama, how did you start off again when you came back to Nigeria? Well, is uh, it, it wasn't all that smooth because where I, I was coming from, the government they have earmarked plots for schools for hospitals and so where I, I was using a school there was actually given to me i remember all i paid would be equivalent for c for c this uh so this of 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 mm -hmm. was just equivalent to two thousand naira here but the plot was given to me free of charge because it was earmarked for school for education so but coming here the first thing is that i have to buy i have to buy a plot that runs in the millions and uh, it's it, it was good that at least I had enough capital when I came in here but and running running it wasn't that easy because now everything depended on my own efforts unlike there that the government was able to assist with some things so it has it has been a little rough but I thank God because I have the passion when I was lecturing in the university over there my Professor was asking me that why don't you just stick with the university job? Why are you still running primary and secondary? I said is because of just job satisfaction. I'm interested in seeing a, a person that doesn't know and then he knows through me. I want to see growth. I want to see a child that somebody will say this person is wrong, 
this one is not smart and then i will say give me the person and by the time the person is with me the person catches up and is doing well so that passion was there and that was actually what kept me going and god surrounded me with some few people that could understand me and through the thick time i was with them and well i'm where i am today but it has been with a lot of struggle compared to where I was coming from because there are a lot of conditions that will be given that you need to do this, you need to do that without assistance. Well, because it's passion, I had to do it. Especially because I saw that the students that I'm teaching, when they compete with, with other international students, because we have a lot of competitions we go for, they excel. That keeps me going. And I felt what I've gained over the years in other people's country, I want to give to Nigerians. And I can see it working in them. So that was actually what has kept me. It is that passion. So, Mrs. Patient Adu, talking about growth, would you say that uh, students, years upon years, have been able, you have been able to inculcate enough knowledge in them that have seen them grow intellectually? Yes. Yes, because even when they go abroad and write exams, some of them, they win scholarship. Mm -hmm. And when they came here, they wanted that group. But I assured the parents that they should leave the kids with me. They should allow me to mentor them. They should allow me to supervise them. And I see them excelling. I, I see some of them, they even do exam. And uh, some are on scholarship in Germany. Some are on scholarship. In the, in the U.S. and they learned here. I know them when they were brought here because parents were saying this one, this one is not even making us. No, just leave the person over the years and they were improving. So really, I have that testimony of front runner here that students that are brought here because of the close monitoring, and we know this is a slow student. We need to actually do this. We know what to do. We know students that are that are fast. We know what to do. Because of that, and I don't take teachers that are not trained. And I periodically, I make sure I train them, I give them those knowledge that they need to know to take care of the kids. And those are the things that have actually kept us going. The result, the result has been wonderful. So the secret to your success, or what is that special method? I want you to share that special method that you have used over the years that have seen you go to school just from three to five hundred and three counties with more than two branches. What is that special secret? Okay, like I've told you, the passion is one. Okay. Number two is reproduction of myself in other teachers. Okay. Training them okay. and letting them in uh, Maya too. So we are really making progress and we are doing well. Uh, I'm a trained teacher, just like I said. I've taught in different realms. I was a lecturer in the University of Dar es Salaam for some years, and I've been here helping in one way or the other in the secondary realm, in the primary realm, and as an administrator. I've been a, a successful administrator and very really glad about that. Thank you. Uh, Madam, you said you caught your teeth in West Africa. That is where you started all this. So if you want to compare uh, private teaching education in East Africa to what you have in West Africa here in Nigeria to be precise, what would the comparison look like? Well, when we talk about education in East Africa, the difference is clear. The difference is clear because uh, they, 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 they are actually very strict and in terms of private schools, you prefer to have private schools in East Africa because people don't owe the way they owe here. During the holiday, they will have finished paying whatever amount they want to pay. And uh, you can plan your things. You can plan what you... It's on, unlike West Africa, or my experience here, that a lot of people owe, even if you ask them too much, it will be as if you are stressing them. And over there too, we have government supports. Several times they've given me grants over there that maybe during, during December they can ask for the number of students. If you have 500 students, they bring package that they will need for the next section. 
So it's been very, very peaceful and you would love to be there. So when I came here, it was, it was a bit, not as easy as it was there. Because over there, you don't even need to borrow money to do certain things. And their organization is quite better. Their education is also, the quality is there. Because there's less corruption. So, Ma, what, uh, why did you migrate from East Africa to West Africa? Thank you very much. Coming, come, West Africa is home. Nigeria is home. And uh, looking at, at my age, I'm getting older. So definitely, I would want to, to be home. And of course, the way I left home was different from the way I met it. Because when I came back, you could have teachers that are graduates that say they're graduates. When you interview them, you meet something else. The standard has really fallen. So everything was new. But I just told myself that I'm in somebody's country, I have a lot of properties, I have a lot of things. In my own country, what do I have? And I felt I should be able to also contribute to the growth of the education in my own country. And that was actually my aim of coming back here. I don't regret coming back because at least I've been able to influence student lives. Many students have gone, gone out of my school some are in abroad, some are here, and they are doing well, and they have the quality education which I offer them. So that's it. It was a passion. And it is a passion. It's not a, just, just a business. It's a passion. And coming to Nigeria, oh, then you yeah. have to start with just free students compared to East Africa. Here, it's a very hard, a multitude of plenty to your students. Exactly. It must have been a very challenging moment for you. But before you go to that question, we have to go on a quick commercial break. And by the time we get back, you respect your listening and viewing audience. And stay tuned, stay on with the last FM. We'll be right back. For sponsorship, advert placement, please call 081 Nine two two. Red Alert FM News as it breaks. So, th about the methods, like I've, I've talked already about uh, the passion. And the teachers are being trained also. We actually deal with individual students and we make sure we don't have too many children in the class so that at least for the students we are able to know. We know those that are slow in learning and we look at, we give them more attention. Those that are fast, we know them and we know what to do as trained teachers. And that's why we make sure that the teachers that are being brought in are trained teachers. And we also invest in them by training them. And that is why teachers should be valued. Teachers sh should be really valued because uh, pe many people look down on teachers and that shouldn't be. Uh, when my professor was telling me as a lecturer, why do you still like primary school and secondary school? I said, I have job satisfaction there because I, I know that I invest in them and I see the changes in them. So teachers are actually to be valued because you see the, the people that have become doctors, pharmacists. My, I, I have my daughter, my, my loved one that's a pharmacist that works with some Americans. But I want to tell you that he, she was a student in my school. I taught her. The one that is working in the bank was a student in my school. I taught him. So you find that all these ones, they will not become, even the president, the president will not become the president if he didn't go through those schools. So that is the value. And what I do for my teachers to know that I value them is that apart from the salary that I give to them, the extra classes that we have, that the parents will say they are demanding for extra classes, maybe for some students that needs to catch up, I'll tell the teacher that can do it, please you can do this, and I give them a uh, tax on what to do. But when they do it, I don't share the money with them. You hold the money. 
like this online teaching that was going on even during this pandemic, I told them whatever money is realized there, please let the teachers share the money. So people should really value teachers because without teachers, those professionals will not become anything. And that value, that's why I appreciate over there that they will, they will give grants, they will give teachers things, they will, in fact, the most, the, the most uh, successful schools, normally they will sell number one to ten. If you are in, in the case of number one to ten best schools in your results, you are giving some things. And our school has always been in that in East Africa. But I've not heard such a, such a thing here in Nigeria that uh, because your school is the best school or because teachers, we just want to, the government just want to give this to teachers to encourage them. We really need this because teachers will feel important and they will do more when they are actually appreciated. So that is an area that our government should look into encourage the teachers even in private school they need to, uh, to encourage the private school teachers because public cannot do it alone we have so many children that they cannot do it alone so in in, in, in private schools they need the encouragement of the of the government so that they will know that they are not less because they are the one that produce the professionals that we have all over the world abroad teachers there are some countries that teachers at the, at the best paid, they pay them more than any other people because they know the, the, the stress and the rigor they have to go through to achieve. So, Mrs. Luwani, Fashion Thousands, talking about uh, appreciation, talking about value, if you have to step into the shoes of maybe government advisor on education, what would be your advice to Lagos State government and Nigeria government at large? As concerns the education. As a matter of fact, if I have that opportunity, I will make sure that teachers are appreciated. I will want to make sure that they are encouraged. And if there are opportunities, some donations could be do could be done to the teachers of different schools just to encourage them, to bring them to the light and to let them know they are important so that they can actually do more. Because when we do that, we are actually doing ourselves a lot of good. Because they are the one investing, they will be able to give quality education to the students and it's going to be better for us because knowledge is power. So lastly, Ms. Lurevi, Fashion Thousand, are you satisfied with the Commissioner of Education for Lagos State and uh, the Minister of Education? Uh, are you satisfied with the way they have handled the education sector in the last three years vis-a-vis -vis the coronavirus pandemic? As a matter of fact, is is tricky. It is tricky. Uh, they may be doing their best, but if I'm to bring my own value system especially during this pandemic, I'm not too happy with their, their reactions to teachers, especially private school teachers. So really, if I had my way, I will actually advise uh, the Minister of Education that the teachers should be valued and they should be appreciated. Like this time of pandemic, I expected that private school teachers will actually be giving things palliatives should be given to them to appreciate them that these are the people taking care of our children our our students and the youths that are the leaders of tomorrow but it it was not done okay good enough uh, uh, private uh, private school teachers are being paid how about public private school teachers so i expected more from the government for encouragement and to give palliatives of course we appeal to them and they promise what they'll do nothing has come for if i am to advise them teachers should be given priority more and they should be helped they should be encouraged and this time around they need the government more than any other time thank you you credit viewer i came in here to interview professor agu patient but i ended up getting education for free I will say you have educated me now. It's been nice talking to you on Red Alert FM. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, madam. So
So viewer, you've heard it live and you watch it live. So always remind you to read the last station and the program is Heroes in Disguise. For sponsorship, advert placement, please call 0810-241-5922. Red Alert FM News as it brings.